Parker, of course, it's been fun for all of us to speculate with uh, Oklahoma moving to the SEC, what that schedule is going to look like and that schedule format that's being worked on right now by the various SEC schools. And we believe uh, may come out uh, during those destined meetings in Florida at the end of May. Uh, I, I think there's kind of two levels to it. There's that group of teams or that one or two teams for most programs that they they have to play. And then there's that group of teams that, you know, it makes sense. So when I look at, you know, and I put together the entire deal for the SEC and Oklahoma has to play Texas, of course, then there's Arkansas. You can make a case for Arkansas. You can make a case for A&M. You've got Missouri. You can make a case uh, for that, um, you know, series that goes back to the big 12 days. Where do you stand on Oklahoma's uh, permanent opponents? Well, to be honest, Mark, uh, to the best of my knowledge for probably, gosh, six, seven weeks now. And this kind of lines up with the report that blew up on social media from Ross Dellinger of Sports Illustrated. The best of my knowledge, it's looking like Florida is going to be one of Oklahoma's per permanent opponents, which I love. Obviously, you got to play Texas, as you mentioned. Seems like Missouri is a safe bet to be another one of the permanent opponents. But if you got to pick a number three, man, I don't, I don't know if there's a school I'd rather have Oklahoma play year in and year out than Florida because I think those two programs have a lot of parallels. Uh, they obviously have some history. When you think back to the 2008 National Championship game, Sam Bradford versus Tim Tebow, the Gators outpacing the Sooners in what was Oklahoma's most recent appearance in a national title game. And moreover, you got two of the great traditions, two of the great uh, most storied organizations in college football in Oklahoma and Florida. With the Gators having the opportunity to come to Owen Field, and the Sooners return the favor in Ben Hill Griffin Stadium. I think that's a game on which there's going to be a lot of eyes trained every single year. And would you like, I, I, if you're a team like Oklahoma, would you like your non-conference, or excuse me, your permanent conference schedule to be Texas, Alabama, LSU? Sure, but you're not going to be able to have your pick of the litter like that when you got 15 other teams that need to have their schedules aligned with yours. And so... There's going to be a clunker somewhere along the way. It feels like Missouri is that for Oklahoma, but you preserve a historic rivalry in OU Texas. Obviously, that's never going to go anywhere. I think there really is the opportunity for a new rivalry to emerge between Oklahoma and Florida, and I'm super intrigued to see what that will look like 10, 15 years down the road as those programs get used to seeing each other every single season. Then I got to think, Parker, that there are portions of the fan base that are taking the other end of the spectrum to say the, the SEC is going to be difficult enough. Give us the easier games. We'll take Mizzou and Arkansas. Yeah, and I I wouldn't mind seeing Arkansas on the permanent schedule uh, if I were Oklahoma because that fan base is ardent. Fayetteville is right up the road, about a three-hour drive from Norman. And so I think – that could be your replacement for the Oklahoma State rivalry, which kind of goes by the wayside with Oklahoma making that transition, right? So that could be your new bedlam, that series with Arkansas. But uh, if you have to sacrifice Arkansas on the altar and get in an annual matchup with Florida, again, I think that's a net win. Fortunately, even if uh, you don't get the permanent opponents that you want, we're going to be in a scheduling format that you're still going to see the rest of the league every other year or at the outside every three years, as opposed to what's common uh, currently in place in the SEC and the ACC, where if you don't have a matchup with that team outside the division, you're not going to see them for six or seven years. So at least that's going to be fixed. And if you don't get the permanent opponents you want uh, as a fan, you're still going to see those, those teams frequently. Yeah, absolutely. And the way it's set up in the new SEC, right, is you play everybody at least every other year. So um, non-con, I, I think I'm, I'm more curious than anything else is to see what Oklahoma's non-conference slate looks like annually after they make the transition to the SEC. I'm not sure how much that changes. I'm not sure what becomes of the matchups that are already on the slate, whether those are preserved, whether those are revisited. I would like to see Oklahoma make the trip up to West Point to play Army, which was a road trip they were supposed to make back in 2020. Uh, but then obviously COVID-19 happened and threw a wrench in everything. So you're going to make the rounds in the SEC. I really like the new scheduling format. The only natural question that that leaves is, well, okay, what does Oklahoma's non-con schedule look like in the SEC? Because I think the criticism that a lot of these fans within the OU fan base have 
of the SEC scheduling model is you've always got that late November matchup between Alabama and the Citadel, right? Or LSU and Savannah State. And so do you still get that? I, and you hate to term it a throwaway game out of respect for the opponent, but you got to play in – FCS opponent in November every year. Once you make the transition to the SEC, that'll be an intriguing storyline to watch. Absolutely. Parker Thune, OU Insider. That's 247 Sports and Sports Talk 1400 and uh, 947 The Ref. Parker, we always appreciate you stopping by, laying down the knowledge. Absolutely, Mark. Thanks.